video, I am going to teach you how to actually test and generate images um, using Google Colab from my StyleGAN2 library. Um, so in a previous video, I showed you how to build your data set and train uh, your StyleGAN2 model. Um, and then this time, I'm going to show you how to use Google Colab um, to actually generate images from that trained model. Um, <clears throat> so there's two ways you could train, or sorry, there's two ways you could generate images. One is to do it directly off of Paperspace. The second is to use uh, Google Colab. Um, each of them has their own benefits and their own uh, pros and cons. Um, I would say generally if you have just finished training your model in Paperspace, then using uh, generating those images directly in Paperspace makes a lot of sense because your machine's already open, it's already set up, it's pretty easy to run a command. Um, the downside of it is it's going to cost you money just like it does anything on Paperspace, um, so keep that in mind. Uh, the reason you might want to use Colab is, number one, it's free, uh, so it's very easy to like, you know, do it, generate a bunch of images, and it doesn't cost you any money. Um, the downside is it's kind of slow and a little bit arduous to set up. Um, so again, if you just want to generate a bunch of images based on a model you just trained, then do it on Paperspace. But if you have a model from a month ago um, and you're debating whether or not you want to fire up Paperspace and log in and do all that sort of work, or if you just want to generate a couple images, then Colab might be a better option for you. Uh, next, let's talk about how you can actually find the, the Colab files. Um, so if you go back to my uh, dvschultz slash AI GitHub repo, you'll see inside here there is a, there's a file called stylegan2.ipynb. Uh, that stands for IPython Notebook. Um, Google Colab is basically a system that runs on IPython Notebooks. Um, and if you've never used a notebook before, I'll walk you through a couple of the little weird parts of it, but um, in general it's like pretty easy to grab and open. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on this file. Once it loads, you're going to see there's a button here in Open and Colab. Um, this will require a Google uh, account of some kind, so either a Gmail account or a G Drive account or something, um, just for you to be able to log in. Um, all you're going to need to do is once you have an account, just click Open and Colab. And it's going to open right up. Um, I'm going to switch my account here really quickly just so I'm working on the right account. Um, cool, so now you are inside of Colab. Um, and this is, works pretty similar to a lot of other uh, IPython notebook files in that there is a mix of code, which you can run directly live here. This w connects to a GPU server. And then there's text. Um, and what's nice about this is like, I can sort of write some instructions and you can read it and understand it and then you can run the code. Uh, so it's pretty helpful in terms of like an instructional uh, tool. Um, but it's also a little different than like running a command line directly in paper space, right? So you'll see that there are some like git clone, which is like a thing we've seen before, but all of a sudden there's also this like exclamation mark in front of it. Um, there's some special code that is like determining your TensorFlow version. Um, so some of this will look a little foreign to you, and it's not directly, like you can't just take this line of code and cut it, paste it into paper space and expect it to work. Um, you have to know a little bit about how different commands work. In general, if there's like a little um, special character in front of the uh, command, that means you can use everything except that special command, and it maps pretty, pretty correlates pretty easily to paper space. Um, there's some gotchas in there, but that's generally a thing you would try and see how it works. Um, the next thing you need to know is that along the left-hand side here, um, you have a table of contents, which is just like describing how this article is laid out. You have code snippets, which we won't get into now. Um, but they exist if you are interested in like digging in deeper, and then files. So files is like the how we're going to actually interact with the different um, pieces of our data. So like say we're going to upload a pickle file here and then be able to interact with it. Um, one thing before you get started with anything is to make sure that your runtime is set correctly. So go here and go to um, change runtime type. Make sure this is set to GPU. If it's not set to GPU, nothing you're going to do is work is going to work. Um, and you're going to have to basically restart it from scratch um, and uh, start over. So if this weren't set to, if this were set to none, and then I did a bunch of work, and then I realized it wasn't working, and I set a GPO, I'd have to start over from scratch, um, which is just annoying. Um, it happens. It happens to me quite often. Um, but generally, the first thing you need to do is check to make sure your runtime's set. So I'm going to make sure this is saved. Um, I want to make sure that I have a connection here. So it says connected to um, some things. That's that's what matters, and then we see GPU. Um, okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do for this is just because I know it's going to take a little while, I'm going to grab one of my um, files, one of my pickle files. So this is a file that I just finished training on a Paperspace GPU, and then I pulled it down to my local computer, um, and I'm just going to upload this to uh, Colab. So all I have to do is like drop this in here, um, and it should just upload. Um, 
and it's gonna always remind you the first time you upload a file that like once the runtime stops, um, it's gonna delete all your files. So definitely keep that in mind. Like if you're generating images, you wanna save those images before your runtime stops. And Colab has like a limit of about eight hours um, in runtime. So make sure that you're not like, you don't leave the browser and then come back the next day and you're wondering why your work is gone. Um, so while this uploads, this is gonna take a little while to upload. So I'm gonna walk you through how this works. Um, so the first thing you need to do is, in order to run a command, you need to hit shift return. Um, the other thing you can do is you can hit this little play icon, but everyone sort of does shift return. Um, so if you see a command running, that's what it means. Um, so what are we gonna do is when we hit shift return here, this is going to make sure we're using TensorFlow version one. Um, then it's going to clone this repo down, which is the StyleGAN repo that I've uh, used before and that you're using on Paperspace. Um, the next thing is it's gonna move into that folder and then it's gonna create a folder called Datasets. So let's go ahead and run this by hitting Shift Return. And you're gonna wanna run this anyway, you can trust me. Cool, and now if I go over here to my Files tab and I refresh, you'll see now I have StyleGAN2. Um, so the rest of what's in here is, uh, I have uh, this contains a bunch of text to explain how you can do the data set conversion, which I talked about last week or in a previous video, um, if you're not in my class. Um, it also shows training and training options. Um, I don't recommend training stuff in Colab. The eight hour limit makes it really annoying to uh, sync up all of your pickle files and then restart the instance of Colab and then keep going on it. It's just like, it's kind of slow. Um, it's really annoying. Uh, it is free though, so if you'd like, cost is a really big issue for you. Um, there are ways to hack around this. Um, there's a couple other people who have like built some style again libraries that help sort of move things along a little bit quicker inside of Colab and help sync up your data. So it's a little bit easier, um, but it comes with all sorts of drawbacks. So I would generally recommend not doing it unless you really, really have to. Um, but the code is here. Um, what's nice about this is like, if you forget uh, how to do this in your paper space machine, you can just go here and copy this line and paste it into um, your paper space and it will pretty much work as is. Um, there's also some stuff on training over here and there is some stuff about uh, how to run the training set, set up. Um, this will work um, both on your paper space machine, so if you just take this line, but then also if you run it here, it will work um, for a couple hours on Colab. I'm gonna skip this section because I've already talked about it, um, but it's here if you need it as reference. Next thing is we're gonna look at testing the model. So this is actually what we're doing right now. So I'm uploading the pickle file um, so that I can actually run a test. Testing is the same as generating images. Um, in the data science world, testing means like something very explicit, like checking your work. Um, but because we're artists and this is the whole point of what we're doing, um, testing for us means creating the artwork we wanna make. Um, so this is the command we're gonna run. It's pretty lengthy, um, but actually the steps make a pretty good amount of sense. So uh, first off, it's a Python command, then there's the script we're gonna run. There is an argument here called generate images that just tells us like using this, com using this script file, um, we want to run this function. And then the next thing we want to think about is con uh, the network. So this is going to point to your pickle file. So inside of Colab, this is really, really easy to do actually. Even though this isn't finished uploading, um, I can click here, so I just like control click on this, hit copy path, and then I can paste this path in here. You want to go up to uh, the equal sign and then hit paste. And now I've got the path inside of Colab directly to this file. Um, so that's all I need for that. There are two other commands you need to pass in to generate images. The first is seeds number, um, and then the next is truncation. So seeds are the number of images you wanna produce. And um, if you've ever done anything with random seeds, that's essentially what this is. These are randomized inputs um, that generate a uh, unique output. So if this were to say seeds equals one, it's gonna take the, the one-th random seed uh, and input that in. And if you were to run this every time, you'll get the exact same image back if you're using the same network. So um, this is kind of helpful in case you like really like an image and you want to do something like interpolation through it. Um, but for this, like, what we actually want to do is I actually so let's produce 25 images. So I'm going to actually hit, hit one um, dash 25. So it's going to generate 25 images. It's going to generate one, two, three, four, all the way up to 25 for me. Um, so that's how you use seeds. The next thing we're talking about is truncation. So truncation is a special uh, thing within StyleGAN, and essentially the idea behind truncation is that the closer you are to zero, um, the more likely the image is to be realistic. 
and uh, the further away from zero you are, the more likely the image is to be weird or like not a realistic image. So in general, most people use a value between 0 0.5 and 1.0. Um, 0 0.5 will give you like pretty realistic results. Um, so something like the face model that StyleGenge trained on will give you really realistic faces. And the further you get away from that number, the more likely it is to get basically weirder results. Um, so I'm going to show this with uh, 0.7 just so we can look at sort of like an average in the middle. Um, I'm still waiting on my uh, file here to upload. So let's see what else I have here while we look around. So what this is going to do is this is actually just going to, um, we're going to generate 25 images and then we're going to run a command that zips them up and then we're going to download them. Um, so while I get set up here, why don't I just make sure that all my zip commands are set up. Um, so I usually like to uh, include like what the truncation PSI is on this. And then I know, so basically when this runs, it's going to generate a folder called this. And then we're going to zip up that folder, which has, we'll have images in it, and then we'll be done. Um, so I'm going to do that. And then basically what will happen is once I get a zip file, I'll download that from Colab. Um, since this is still uploading, I'm going to pause for a minute, and I'll be back when this file is finished uploading, and we can run that command. Um, this file is finished uploading. You can tell because that upload um, widget is gone, um, and this is now ready to go. So the next thing I need to do is I just want to run this command, and it's going to start generating images for me. So as you can see, this is the exact same um, type of output you might see on your paper space machine. Um, so it's just telling you that you know we're setting up some files. Um, StyleGAN has this thing that is like um, custom CUDA operations, which help it run a little bit faster. So that's what we're seeing here. And what's nice about testing or like generating these images, it happens much faster than you would expect. Like, considering how slow training is. Uh, this process is really, really fast. It also requires less GPU, which is why we're able to use something like Colab to actually generate these things. Um, so whereas paper space requires like, or like Saogan to train requires about 16 gigabytes of GPU. Um, I think the Colab machines are 11 or 16 gigabytes. Um, if they're 11, it still will work fine. Um, generating images is much faster and requires less uh, processor units. Um, so see, we're already generating our images here. Um, this particular one seems to be going a little bit slow. Um, now it's now it's picked up a little bit. So we'll get to 25 pretty quickly here. Okay, and we're done. So it took one minute and 20 seconds to generate 25 images. Uh, now if I go over here and I hit refresh, um, and then I go into my results folder instead of style again too, you'll see that here I have uh, generate images. If I go in here, now the problem with Colab is you can't view, like you can't just press this and like preview this image. You're gonna have to download it. Um, so I'm gonna download one and we can just look at it and see what it, see what it looks like. So there's one image. Um, now I don't recommend doing that for all 25 images because it's gonna drive you insane, um, especially if you generate more than 25. Um, so the, the command I recommend you do is run the zip command. Um, so because this results folder is all zeros, um, this matches up correctly. Now, if you were to run this again, you would get a new results folder that had 0001. So you want to make sure if you try to zip up that folder that you change this name. Um, this name should match whatever the, this folder's name is. Um, so I'm going to run this. It's going to zip up the file pretty quickly. And we're done. And now when I refresh this, you'll see now I have a generated.zip file. Um, now, if I download this, it's going to download. Now, the reason I did 25 images is because this will be pretty fast to download. Um, I usually do chunks of like 300 to 500 images, but this download takes 10 minutes then. Um, so it's a lot slower. Um, so I generally recommend like you can do more, more seeds, and the way to do more seeds is by changing this number. It also, this number doesn't have to start at 1. This number could be, you know, like that's a valid number. It's just then you also want to make sure that this one is higher than this one. Um, I don't know that it works backwards. So like that's a totally reasonable way to look at that, uh, except that we need one more zero. Um, this would generate, what, 600 and some images, 550 images or whatever. Um, so this will totally work. Um, and you'll get different values than you will out of these 25, right? Because 
each of these seed numbers gives you the same image. So you could produce, you know, infinite number of images from this thing. And if you go through that infinite number, um, you'll eventually see ones that are very, very close to each other. Um, but that's generally like all you need to do um, to generate that. So you'll get like endless selection of images. Um, so I'm gonna go here, over here and open the zip file. One thing to note that's a little weird is that uh, it doesn't just download that zip file, it downloads the entire path to that zip file. Um, so here you'll see that like, I had all these folders I had to open. But then inside of here, if I double click this and sort by name, um, that's the image I already downloaded. And here are a couple images. So it's also worth pointing out that like random seeds do are not like they're not next to each other, right? So this image is not next to this image inside of the model and the and the latent space. Um, these images are randomly produced. And so now I could go back and I could say like, hey, I actually want to run, I want to get 550 of these, and I can run this again, and I can zip up that folder, and I can download that. Um, and all this is free on Colab, which is pretty great. Um, you know, you're obviously using Google, which you're, uh, you can make your own claims about their ethics or what they might be doing with this data. Um, but it's, you know, pretty helpful that you can do this for free. Um, you can always come back here and generate more of these images at any time. What you'll have to do is if you restart this uh, Colab notebook, you'll need to re-upload that pickle file, rerun these commands at the top, and then come back down here and edit everything again. So it is a little bit of a painful setup, but probably no more painful than paper space, and paper space costs you money. Um, so I'm going to do one more additional piece of this video, uh, and I'll come back to it, um, is to show you how to do interpolations through this. Um, so I'll be back in, uh, in just a minute, um, and I'll show you that code. If you're guessing that I left because I had to write this code, you're right. Um, uh, anyway, um, I'm going to show you how to do interpolation. Um, interpolation is a technique of animating between different images. Um, the way this works in StyleGAN is that every... So remember when we made a seed, um, a seed is a random vector in space, um, and that random vector has a certain particular point in space. Um, and if you can imagine, a, like I say, a three-dimensional space, if you pick two points and those two points are images, then if you draw a line between those two points and every point along that line you have a different image, you get basically a morphing. Um, so it changes from one image to the next. Um, so I'm going to show you how we can do that inside of StyleGAN. Um, the technique that I use for this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to do what's called latent walk, which is I'm going to assign a couple of points and then we're going to walk through them. Um, so the way this works is I actually go into, let's look at the generated images that I already generated from this network. Um, so if you recall, we looked at these images. So basically what I do is I just go through and I say, oh, what images do I like? So like this image, okay, cool. So I'll write down three and then um, like this one, that's 11. What else is here? Um, I think I like that one, 15. So I'll go through and I'll pick a bunch of images, right? So what I do is then we've got this new, so we'll look at this new command. It's still run generator, but it's called what's, what's called generate latent walk. Um, so I still pass in the network. It's the same network I was using before. And then in the seeds, instead of giving it a range, which is like three to, or one to 25, now I give it individual points. And you'll see what I did is I did three comma 11 comma 17 comma 25 comma three. And we'll come back to why I added that three at the end. Um, but basically those correlate to the images I like in here. So it was what, it was three, 11, 17, and 25. Cool. So. And then the last thing is I put in the three at the end because I want it to return to three. This is going to make a looping video. So it's going to start at three and then it's going to end at three. And we create a looping video, which is really cool. Like you can do this to make animated GIFs of this stuff if you want to. Um, the next command is frames. So how many frames do I actually want to produce? Um, this will depend a little bit on what you end up making your frame rate. Um, but it's also just like this is how it's going to take long to produce this. Um, and then it's also like how long do you want your video to be? Uh, and then lastly, truncation PSI, which we can um, set to anything between five and two. Um, I'm gonna keep it at 0.7 again. Um, so I'm gonna run this command. Uh, it's gonna work on some stuff and then we'll talk about what I'm gonna do next with this. So this is going through the exact same process it did previously. It's just setting up everything. And it's gonna generate images.
And the good news is that like this is going to take a little bit longer, right? It might take a couple minutes to generate this, but I basically have already generated this. Um, this is the so 0001 is the exact same process. Uh, 0002 is this new one that I'm just going to leave here. Um, what I'm going to show you next is how to actually turn this into a video. So with this, you actually have a bunch of frames, right? So you have all of your frames for your video. So if you wanted to, you could zip this up using the same technique as the cell before. Um, so just set zip, change your name here, and then point it to the right file, uh, to the right folder. So this would be 0001, generate late walk. And you could download that zip, and then you could bring it into After Effects, do whatever you want to do with it. Um, what I'm going to do here is directly, instead of Colab, I'm going to generate a video from it. Um, and the way this works is we're going to use a thing called FFmpeg. Um, so what you do is you say you call FFmpeg, then you call rate. So this is the frame rate. So I'm going to do 24 frames per second. Um, and then you say, what's the input, which is dash i. And that's going to point to uh, this first folder. Um, the thing that's important to recognize here is this percent 05. That means, or percent 05d. So that says, give me every uh, integer uh, from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, all the way up till it's finished. So it's actually going to sort through and, and sort these by this integer, um, which is really important because you want to make sure it stays in order. Um, this is some codec stuff. You don't need to worry about this. And then the last part is, what do I want to name the, the file? So I actually already generated one of these, so I'm just going to generate this again and just say uh, latentwalk-v2. Um, and then we're going to run this. And it's going to spit out a bunch of code for a little bit. Um, basically, when this says stop, then we'll, re then we'll refresh our file browser and we'll look at what we got. And this might be taking a little bit longer just because I'm still generating these images up here. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, so once this finished generating, then we could jump to the video. I think it's going to take about a minute to render, so we, I'll stay here. Cool, and now it's finished because the that spinning icon is done. Um, if I go over here and hit free refresh, you'll see there's latent walk v2, and I can download this. And I can say show and finder. And we've got a pretty cool animation, um, and that wasn't that hard, right? I generated a couple images, picked out my favorites, and then I was able to generate a video from it. And you will see it starts and stops at the exact same image, so it's essentially looping. Now, one thing to note about this technique is that you'll notice that like the speed is a little, uh, I want to say herky-jerky, but I don't know how else to describe it. It's not uh, seamless. It's not continuous. And that's because we're using this latent walk where we might be picking points in space that are close to each other or really far away from each other. And because of that, you will get a different speed between walking between those points. Um, there's another technique that uh, creates a circular motion. Um, but that's not pre-built into StyleGAN 2, and it's also a little messy to work with. Um, so I'm not going to show that, because I think this technique works pretty well. And what's nice is that you know exactly what your middle frames are going to be. So you sort of know the points it's going to be working with, which is better than... Sometimes with a circular frame, I find that it never actually lands at a good point, uh, which is a little bit difficult to work with. Um, but that's it. That was everything we needed to do for generating images. So we generated images and video in a pretty short amount of time, and we did it for free on Colab. Um, so that was pretty great. Um, so that's it for this for this video. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask me in Slack or drop uh, a note for me in the YouTube video. Thanks.